Hey everyone, legal leaders, Al Fragnoli, Zach Sooty back with us again for Hot Topic Tuesday tonight. We got a couple things on the agenda. The first thing we'll chat about is uh, just underway, just starting right now, World Series. So Zach, talk to us a little bit. Uh, Tampa Bay Rays, Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, who do you have winning it all? What do you think is going to be the outcome for this series? So what I think is going to happen versus what I, I want to happen probably differs. Um, you know, I think I think the Dodgers are gonna are gonna win it in seven, but um, with the starting pitching and even the bullpen that the Tampa Bay Rays have, um, and I think there's something uh, the Tampa Bay just does better than anybody else in Major League Baseball with low payrolls is finding young, hungry talent that form great teams, and. Um, if it does go to a game seven, I think Tampa Bay will have an opportunity to win it all. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm hoping Tampa Bay wins it. I hope it goes seven games. Um, I, I love to see the $28 million payroll in Major League Baseball win the whole thing. Um, you know, you got Tyler Glass now, um, who who was in the uh, – uh, was down in Florida when we were down there. Um, you got Austin Meadows, you know, f former Pirates, uh, of course, that we want to, you know, you, we can talk about Charlie Morton, talk about a guy that has just done phenomenal things um, in his pitching career and especially in Tampa. Um, I'm rooting for Tampa. I'm a fan of Tampa. Um, want to see them win it, but I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a true David and Goliath story, if, if you will. Um, you know, $28 million payroll versus, you know, I don't even know what Dodgers payroll is, Al. I'm, I'm, you may know, but it's, you know, rooting for the Rays, want the Rays to win. I uh, hope it goes seven games. If it does, Rays win it. How about you? Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of uh, in the same um, thought process as you. I, you know, I ultimately think the Dodgers are probably going to win in six is what my gut's kind of telling me. Both teams are fantastic, and and you nailed it. I think with the payroll that um, the Tampa Bay Rays currently have at 28 million, it's pretty impressive to see what they're able to do uh, year in year out. And for them to be down to the final two teams here in the World Series is is pretty special. And they do develop some really good talent um, down in their farm system, and um, they draft well. They they just seem to do all the right things with a low payroll. And uh, you know, you mentioned a couple former Pirate guys uh, with Austin Meadows and. Charlie Morton, you know, that's the thing. You mentioned game seven. If it does go seven, uh, you have to imagine Charlie Morton's going to get the ball in that start, no matter what. If he's on two days rest, three days rest, I don't think it matters. He's getting the ball, and he's probably going to give you a solid five innings of shutout baseball, maybe one run, maybe. it's. And then you go to glass now for two or three innings. <laughs> it's really it's unbelievable what, what Charlie Morton's able to do, and Tyler Glass now, what a young – a talented um, individual pitcher uh, that he is. So I think it's going to be a great series. I'm going to say Dodgers in six, uh, but I think a lot of people are obviously pulling for the race. So um, it'll definitely be interesting to see what happens. Well, if you're saying Dodgers in six, I'm going Rays in seven. All right, there you have it. <laughs> so our Big Ten football uh, season starts this week. Uh, excitement level for the season. Who do you think wins the Big Ten? And do you think a Big Ten team makes the college football playoff this year? Yeah, great, great question, Zach. I, so I'm excited for the Big Ten football season to finally get underway here. Uh, I know there's a, a lot of people here in Michigan, obviously, that are excited for Michigan State, University of Michigan football. Uh, the University of Michigan just announced uh, today that the the um, um, the, the students at the university there are going to have a, a stay stay at home order, stay stay um, in place. So um, they said it's not going to affect the athletic department, so we got to really hope that that's the case. We've had a little bit of a spike here um, with some recent COVID cases, and I know the student body at the University of Michigan has had over 1,000 cases since returning um, to on-campus instruction in the fall um, this semester. But hopefully uh, they end up making the season happen because the excitement level is high. They're going to do an eight-game uh, season, um, and then everybody will play in – um, a, a conference championship. You'll have the top two teams and then two versus two, three versus three, so on and so forth. So it should be an exciting season. Um, to answer your second part of your question there about the postseason, I do uh, think Ohio State probably gets into the postseason. I really believe that. I, 
they're they're a talented group just like they've been the last you know decade plus and and i think that they ultimately uh make it to the college football playoff so what are your thoughts uh any any excitement with with some penn state football yeah i think there's always excitement around state college for penn state football i think there's there's high expectations every year um i, I think you know with the paterno years over we've we've gone into a, a, a new, um, you know, just leadership type of, uh, under, under Franklin, that's a little bit different. And, um, I think everybody's excited for it and continues to have high expectations for Penn state. So, um, I think if you would ask any Penn state alum or, uh, Penn state fan, uh, you know, they would say that, uh, they absolutely believe they will make the college football playoffs. Um, and I don't disagree with you. I think Ohio State, they just, they always find a way to win um, year in and year out. So um, would love to see Penn State, you know, be a part of the playoffs. But uh, if, if a Big Ten t- team makes it, it'll be Ohio State. So with that, Al, top five college football teams at the moment, um, who do you think? Is it in- inevitable that we're going to see another Alabama Clemson title game and uh, is Trevor, Trevor Lawrence a lock to be the number one overall pick in the draft and third and final part to that question. How great was his performance this past week? All right. So first of all, Trevor Lawrence, I think is certainly a lock to be the number one overall pick in the draft, no matter who gets that pick uh, this year in the NFL draft. Um, he is such a talent at the, at the quarterback position, uh, his performance this past week. I mean, they put up 73 points and I think they probably, probably easily could have put up 90, which is scary. Uh, they took him out after the first possession in the second half. And I think he had four or five, five touchdown passes, maybe four, a little over 400 yards passing. So incredible uh, performance by him this past Saturday. I think he's a fantastic quarterback and definitely, um, a fun player to watch. Uh, top five teams. So I have right now Clemson, number one, Alabama at two. Ohio State, I think, is going to prove that they're the third best team in the country. And then four and five, I'm, I'm gonna, they can flop anyway. I think right now you got to say Georgia and Oklahoma State. And then if you look at a couple outsiders to potentially sneak into uh, the postseason, and, and that's assuming that a one loss Georgia team won't make it in, Oklahoma State maybe slips up at some point during the season and loses a game and doesn't represent the big 12. I think you got to keep your eye on BYU and Cincinnati. Those are two teams that I think are playing really good football. And if, if BYU potentially goes undefeated with them putting up 50, 60 plus points in a majority of their games here, um, they've got a powerful offense. I, I think that they, they might sneak in. I don't, I don't think a lot of people would agree with me on that, but again, that's assuming Oklahoma state loses Maybe Georgia slips up again, but I think Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State are going to be locks to make it. And then that fourth spot, I think, is going to be up for grabs between maybe three or four different different teams. But yeah, what are your thoughts, uh, Zach? What do you think of Trevor Lawrence, his performance? And I think Trevor Lawrence is a lock for number one. I think uh, his performance was, uh, you know, that of college football legends. <laughs> and I, I, I honestly, you said 90 points. I think they could have put up a hundred um, if, if they re- if they really wanted to, if they would have kept them in um, kind of glad they didn't, uh, you know, integrity, the game, if you will, even if you're up 70 points, but uh, <laughs> if there is any integrity at that point, but uh, best not to go up to a hundred. Um, as for top five, I, I, I agree with your top two. I think three, four, and five are, are going to be um, interesting. Um, but at, at Clemson, Bama might be happening again. So, so uh, and I wouldn't be disappointed for it. I, I you know, look, look forward to it. Turned into a great rivalry. It most certainly has the last few years. It's been a fantastic matchup uh, when those two teams meet up. Uh, last question we'll wrap up with, Zach, is – is uh, just announced today Tua Tonga Viola getting the start this upcoming weekend for the Miami Dolphins. What are your What are your thoughts about him getting the start? The, um, the Dolphins are three and three right now, so they'll head into Week Seven, and he gets the nod. Um, I think it's interesting. I, we talked earlier about the timing of it. Um, 
unique timing to put give him to give him an opportunity. But um, you know, we we talk about leadership, and there's a guy who's rooting for him probably more than anyone else on that football field. And it's Ryan Fitzpatrick. That that he's a selfless leader. He's a servant leader. Um, I think he is one individual that would be excited for, for Tua to, to take the ball and do a fantastic job and root for him and help him succeed. Um, and I think that's the type of human being he is. And I, I think that's um, why I don't feel that this call is a big surprise. I think it's because of the individual who holds that position is going to be so, so supportive of that decision uh, to help him succeed. Um, that it, from a from a football coach perspective, um, you know, it, it, it makes it easy. I, it's, you know, I don't know if you remember back to the Favre Rodgers days, um, you know, drafted Aaron Rodgers, three years, you know, rumors of Favre not, you know, mentoring um, or giving Rodgers an opportunity um, where I think Fitzpatrick would and is going to be a leader to be his biggest cheerleader and uh, help him succeed. So, um, that's my personal thoughts on it. Odd timing, yes, but um, because of the quarterback, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and his leadership skills um, and, and his ability to be a servant leader, um, kind of not surprising. What are your thoughts? Um, you know, I, it, it's funny you mentioned the servant leader um, comment there. I, you know, we had uh, Nate Kopp on with us this past weekend, and he mentioned, you know, servant leader. And, and, um, and I agree with you. I think uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick's a great leader. Um, he's bounced around to a couple different teams in the league. And um, I think he's going to be a great leader and a great mentor for Tua. But I do think that the timing is a little bit surprising. They're three and three right now. And with a young quarterback like that kind of transitioning in, um, it just it, it makes you wonder why they're tweaking with certain things when um, they've played pretty well the last few weeks, in my opinion. And and right now they're in second place in, in that division. It's uh it seems like the division is up for grabs. The Bills have lost the last two weeks. Um, um, you know, they seemed like the front runner, and then it seemed like the Patriots would probably be pushing for that one spot and, and probably settling in the second place. And now you have the Dolphins that are hot right now, and and they've sneaked into second place. So right on, right on the heels of uh, of the Buffalo Bills there. So I think the timing's a little bit odd um, to make a quarterback change when you're three and three, but you know, I'm going to put the the trust in Brian Flores. I'm sure he knows his, his players better than anybody. And um, I'm sure he'll have two ready for success. Two is a competitor, you know, and, and I think he's going to be a fantastic quarterback in, in the league. There was an image that popped up through social media with him. Uh, he got a couple snaps um, in their previous week's game, uh, even though he didn't get the start. And, and after the game, he went back onto the field and just sat down on the field and you could tell that he was probably just taking everything in, taking that moment in. So um, I think ultimately he will have success, um, but I think the timing's a little bit odd, but, but we'll see what happens. So, so I have two things to add out. I think um, from what I've read, I, I believe to a FaceTime his parents or something after the game. Uh, and so his moment of recollection was sharing that moment with uh, family members, which is awesome. Um, I think that's 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 great for a, a, you know a young person to do. So that's pretty cool. Um, second, you know, you mentioned Brian Flores probably knows what's best for this team. Um, they're three and three, but maybe he believes they should be four and two or five and one. I mean, if if giving two of this opportunity, it ha they have to think he's the best option. I mean, you're not just going to give them the opportunity just because he was your your draft pick. Um, you're going to think he gives you the best opportunity to win and, and maybe think, maybe they think they can run, you know, make a run at the division with him at the helm rather than Ryan Fitzpatrick. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if he doesn't have success though, do they go back to the Fitz magic? <laughs> That'll, that will be the storyline to watch in the, in the coming week here. That's for sure. Um, and I think everybody we can agree is probably rooting for, for Tua to have success. You know, he had a devastating injury uh, at the, at Alabama and um, ended his career in that fashion. So I think everybody's going to be rooting for him. So it'll be exciting to, to see him out on that field. So 
Um, two great guys, though. Tua and Ryan Fitzpatrick. I mean, absolutely, I absolutely. I, I wish think, they could both play quarterback for the Dolphins at the same time. <laughs> I think I think the Dolphins definitely have a bright future ahead of them with Tua. So it'll be interesting to see his performance this week, and and we hope he obviously. Um, does extremely well. So, uh, but that wraps it up for tonight for Hot Topic Tuesday. We thank everybody for joining in with us and, and we look forward to uh, talking to everybody next Tuesday on Hot Topic Tuesday and uh, tune in this Sunday as we have Dr. Vincent, Munzer, Vincent uh, Mumford from Central Michigan University joining us on Legal Leaders. So thank you again. Have a great night.